Okay, now uh, we need to introduce the uh, monetary market, which is a market when we can identify money demand and money supply. In order to understand what we mean when we talk of uh, money supply, we can uh, imagine that the household's wealth is divided between two assets, money and a very simple salaries bond. So, uh, portfolio decisions by household are uh, characterized by uh, choosing uh, the quantity of money or bond they want to, uh, to have in their uh, portfolio, in their uh, wealth. Um, in this sense, uh, money demand can be expressed in general as a function of the real GDP Y and of the interest rate I multiplied by the level of prices. The level of prices is quite easy to understand because if the level of prices double, uh, Also, the necessity or the uh, demand for money will double, and it's quite easy to understand. So we can divide this equation by price. Uh, we are also analyzing short run, so prices are fixed and can be normalized to one. So we have, but, but we can divide it by um, by prices. Uh, what is important to understand is that the real income or the GDP has a positive effect. On, uh, Real demand for money is real demand because it's divided by price. Because increasing the income will increase the number of transactions in the economic system, so the demand for money. Uh, while the interest rate has a negative effect on demand for money, but it's uh, because uh, if the interest rate increases, uh, the demand for bond increase and the demand for money decrease. So there is a change in portfolio uh, composition, uh, uh, increasing bond and decreasing money. Um, using this equation, we, uh, we need to uh, identify the equilibrium money market. Uh, we assume that uh, the uh, only uh, the, the central bank can uh, control exactly the uh, money supply, which in real terms can be written as MS or B, where MS is, is the nominal money supply, P is the level of price. Uh, we actually give a, a, an explicit form to the money demand, so we assume that it's linear and we can write that the, the, the real demand for, uh, for money is equal to KY minus h i where k and h are positive but k and h are positive this implies that uh, y is a positive effect and uh, i is a negative effect we can represent uh, this on this plane this space where we have the interest rate and uh, here we have respectively money demand and money supply. Money demand will be downward sloping in this uh, space, this real money demand, showing that increasing interest rate implies a reduction in money demand. Uh, real money supply uh, is fixed by the central bank at the level MS divided by. Uh, P, so this should be a vertical line because the, uh, it's fixed by the central bank. In the equilibrium, the equilibrium is where money demand and money supply in real terms are equal, and so we identify a level of equilibrium set I star in which the, uh, we have the equilibrium. Now, in order to understand that this is a blip, we try to imagine that the interest rate is higher, so at the level i prime, 
with an interest rate of more to my prime, it's quite easy to understand that we have excess of my supply. Uh, in this sense, in order to respond to the supply market, the interest rate should must go down in order to increase the uh, money demand uh, to the level of my supply. So the equilibrium is the, the, the uh, interest rate. I start, so, so I start from so the interest rate we go down from I prime to I star. But we can understand better this uh, effect. It says that if the interest rate is higher, so it's I prime, what we can see is that uh, there is an excess of money supply. So if the interest rate is I prime, money supply is greater than money demand. But this is equivalent to assert that bond demand is greater than bond supply. And if this is true, why we can uh, because the correspond the corris to bond supply correspond to bond demand because uh, in order to uh, supply Money sent a bank demand bond. On the opposite, money demand corresponds to bond supply because it orders to, to demand uh, money, uh, households, people, individual supply their bonds. So, uh, and if bond demand is greater than bond supply, as in uh, uh, every possible market. We have an excess of demand, and this should increase to in, increase in bond price. But we have a, a negative relation between uh, bond uh, price and interest rate. There was no negative relation because uh, the, uh, if we have an increase in bond price, this equivalent to assert that we have reduction in interest rate because. If we consider a very simple, a very simple bond, consider a very simple bond, I can relate this, which uh, give 100 in, uh, at the end of, of the year, the price is equal to 100 divided by plus the interest rate from here the interest rate is equal to uh, uh, 100 of b minus 1 an increase in price implies an actual interest rate that's why the interest rate goes down if, if it's higher than 